Hello, welcome to Citizens Network Gambia. Today we're here at London Stadium, home of West Ham United, on the stadium tour, on the, on, on the Premier League stadium tour. So stay tuned for more videos and don't forget to subscribe on the channel. Thank you. The chairs around, and then David Moyes has the interactive screen here, and then he talks about the forthcoming game, you know, tactics and all that, what to use. Um, but as you can see, we've still got the Olympic rings in here, so mm. still keeping the Olympic field because it was the Olympic Stadium. But as I say, in 2016, they changed it for the West Ham field. Uh, here you've got a map on the wall. You've got a map going through East London there, and it's got various kite mark stamps all over there. Um, go into just famous shipbuilding, shipbuilding company. If you go into London and you walk over Westminster Bridge, the ironwork, that's Thames Ironworks Iron. They, they had the iron, supplied the iron. Royal Albert Bridge, they supplied the iron for that. And they're also famous for a, a ship which is down at Prior to the ticket, if you're playing Category A games at Manchester City, £750, pounds, top end. It's one ticket, okay? But you do get a free programme, so that's very good. <laughs> 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 You get four course meal, but it's very easy. <laughs> no good. Uh, but you do get nice seats in there. But this is called the Royal East because this is where the Queen watched the Olympics. Okay? So we'll be walking in royal footsteps when we go in there, so you have to walk like the Queen. <laughs> very old now, 96. Um, when we go over here, you'll get one of these headsets and a handset. And, uh, what we do is I'll play a couple of videos around the room just so you can uh, relevant to where we are. So we're going to go and sit on these. And you see this area here. So these are the plum seats, these ones here then, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. As they say, the more padding, the more you got to pay. The more padding, the more you got to pay. Okay. All right, so this is the view you get from the Royal East, and it's very nice. They very kindly removed the fans from the pitch. We have some big, massive fans that are normally there circulating the air around the pitch, and that helps the growth of the grass. Um, as you say, it's looking stunning at the moment. They've... Um, they will renew the lines before the next game. They go up and down with the lines. You can see where they've squared off the goals. And you can see with the Billy Bonds. Here, they're going to be putting seats in. It's been agreed, 15.9 million. That they're going to be pushing the dugouts closer to the pitch. So they're all going to go closer, 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 bringing the pitch in. Okay. And so this is going to be the Mark Noble stand. Yes, come on, oh, Mark legend. Noble. Sweet as that. Um, so that'll make it a lot better in here. Will be the capacity then, as uh, if Newham Council agree us, then we could go up to seventy, about seventy-two thousand. So that was uh, by far the largest in uh, capacity crowd, football crowd in the Premier League in London. Obviously, Manchester United are seventy-four, uh, but we'll be close up behind them with seventy-two. Um, at the moment, you can see the seats at the top there, blacked out seats. Blacked out seats there in the Streb Rookin and a bit uh, Bobby Moore stand. They are 6,000 seats which we could have straight away. But Newham Council's argument is that um, they, Stratford can't handle 66,000 football fans through mm -hmm. coming through the station. Yeah, no, but but what well, the funny thing is they'll let 80,000 music fans come through there. Yeah, <laughs> so well, what is the difference? You know? They've got 62 and a half at the start next 62 season. and a half, yes. Yeah, then, like, try, they did then they're pushing the 66. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just a gradually chipping away. Is there 67,000 60 already? 66, yeah, 66. Okay. That's yeah. what they are with their money. Yeah. And then with this, I say, it'll be massive. They've so, started doing this they've already. Said they've got they said that they're dotting another 800 in as well as these extra ones. Are they filling in some of those gaps? Yeah, I think they're talking about two standing areas as well, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Both ends like that. So, yeah, it'll be. Yeah, I mean, it'll be good if they fill it. It'll be fantastic. Um, if you go back to the Olympics, this is what the stadium was for. So, if you think in uh, 2012, 430 million pounds for the actual stadium. 
and the whole of this stadium and the site around it, the Queen Elizabeth site, um, sustainability and low carbon footprint was always in the mind. So that, as I say, they use reclaimed bricks, reusable metals, um, different ecosystems for the rain, uh, and the same of all the uh, buildings in the park. Um, it's ha absolutely regenerated this area massively, isn't it? If you remember yes. here, say pre-2008, this area was very run down. Um, the canals had shopping trolleys in, uh, old bed mattresses and what have you all around, um, but it's been cleared up now. And uh, they say a good way to spot economic growth is to look around and see how many cranes there are. So as you see, a load of cranes around. Um, but you know, after the massive success of the Olympics, what were they going to do with the stadium after? Can they have athletics here one, two, three times a year? It just wouldn't be economical viable to do that. So that was why it was in place with the London Legacy Development Corporation and Newham Council that they would transform the stadium to make it a multi-use stadium. So they had three main modes that they had in mind. Football was going to be the main mode. We know West Ham got that. Um, they would have athletics, where they have the anniversary games and different uh, meetings here. Uh, and then the third would be music, where they put the stage down here and they cover the pitch and you'd have up to 80,000 in here. But to do that, they had to do certain things. So they changed the layout of the seats. Um, they took these out so the seats can go in and out, retract in and out. Um, they did the roof. I mean, the roof to begin with was a lot shorter and the uh, floodlights were half in, half out. So it's gone extended out and they've come in, come in under. So now this is the longest and the largest cantilever roof in the world. It's like 45,000 square meters. Each of the floodlights 45 tons each, mm -hmm. but you do get fantastic acoustics from the actual roof. Mm. You still get wet if you're in the first 10 rows. The rain is not very kind, it never comes down straight. It always comes <laughs> like down that way, yeah. Angle. So, I'll sit over there, I'll yeah. get wet every time. Yeah, you take it, that's part of it. You take you it. The pitch, so that's one. it. Um, so, but you do get this sound as well for the music. So oh, you get yeah. the bands are on there, they've got amplifiers, and all the fans singing and all that, so it does reverberate around. A good way to actually test it, well, it's nice and quiet now, is just to shout. So what I always do now is shout, come on you irons, okay? So after three, I'm gonna count you in, and we're gonna shout, yep? Yeah? Right, clear your throats. Right, one, two, three. Come on, come on you irons! <laughs> so you see, all the way around. Yeah. So you can imagine when you've got 60,000 in here, soon to be 62 and a half, you do get a massive atmosphere here. And West how Ham much are was massive. it if there was stands here? Sorry? How much would it be? There's that lot of stuff they're thinking about doing. They've got enough on their plate probably, I won't they? do not know. Yeah, it's a bit odd having them. Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. the way it goes. Yes. It's, um, yeah, it's impressive. Time League Cup in 1941. But this one was the 1964 FA Cup played at Wembley. West Ham came from behind um, to win 3-2 against Preston North End. Ronnie Boyce there scoring the winner. Uh, and then we went the next year. Bobby Moore lifted up the trophy there. Then he comes back to Wembley, lifts up the European Cup Winners' Cup there in 1965. They beat 1860 Munich 2-0 and Alan Seeley scoring his goals there. Then you come over here, you've got uh, the FA Cup, but in between there really, West Ham won the World Cup for England in 1966 because most of the players were West Ham and all the ones were what scored, Martin Peters and Jeff Burst. Uh, so Bobby Moy went back to Wembley three years on the trot and lifts up the, the trophy, absolutely fantastic. Then there was a bit of a gap until 1975 and that was the Alan Taylor show. He scored two goals in the uh, quarterfinals, two in the semi and two in the final. So Alan Taylor, top man. 1980 would have had there Sir Trevor Brook in where he was doing up his boot lace and headed the ball in the net against the Arsenal. So over here, yeah, actually on Sunday the players parked here. They don't normally park here, but they have done a couple of times. Manchester United, they parked here, uh, and for Arsenal. That's when you saw like the Ferraris out there, the Lambos, and Declan Rice's Porsche and all this. Um, but they are sponsored by um, uh, Audi, so you see a lot of high-end quattros that they have. Um, but normally they'd come, the most normally they would come from the training ground, Rush Green, on the coach, park here, and they get off and they come through. 
So as they come through these doors, you've got all the press lined up along here. So they're trying to grab an interview. Uh, and on this, this little bit in the middle, that's where they put the sponsor screen and they do the interviews here. So you'll get um, David Moyers, who'll give an interview straight along here. And you'll also get the opposing manager who will do an interview there. If a player is contractually agreed to do an interview, he will do it there. But you know what they're like normally, they're in, headphones are in, they're like they're straight and they turn left and they're in the dressing room. Yeah. So the away team, they come through here, and this is the away team. And if you see there where it says this way, keep, uh, and we send them down this way, through those big double doors at the back, Round to the left by their, we've got a 100 metre warm up track which is inside, send them round the back of that and then back round and then into the dressing room. But effectively, they could turn left here and it's their door on the left. So we're making them walk along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they come round now, oh, what's happening? I'm so sorry. Well, they do it as like, a, they first of all done it as a COVID protocol. Um, they, these go up. They keep them apart, you know, for the COVID, and then they go on the pitch and they're uh, all over each other. Um, so here we've got the legends and the record holders. Sir Trevor Brookin, so Knight of the Realm, uh, he holds the record for being Hammer of the Year. So Hammer of the Year is like Player of the Year. He holds that five times. No one, no, no other West Ham player has won it five times. How does Mark Noble not have this? Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just the way it goes. Who's in this tie? who the fans vote for, it's yeah. done by the fans. Um, here, Billy Bonds, 799 appearances, right? So tomorrow night, uh, get him on for two minutes, give him 800, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Get him at the back there, he'd be nice and strong at the back, still still fit, I think. <laughs> uh, no, he played here 27, well, he played and managed 27 years at the club, played till he was 41. Two FA Cups, you know, he's got a stand named after him, an absolute legend, Billy Bonds. Six foot two, eyes are blue, Billy. <laughs> Modern British Empire, sadly passed away 2019 of Alzheimer's. So now they're trying to link a lot of this head in the ball, you know, in sports and uh, American football with a bashing of the heads and uh, rugby. So they're getting a lot of dementia stuff, Alzheimer's, so there's a lot of research going on. And then soon, I think, you know, they, they said that, I don't know if it's happened yet, but they're going to put stickers. Dressing room. <laughs> yeah. These are the current team. He, he was in the under 23. 23, yeah, it's good, yeah. it's good, yeah. Yeah, you think under 23, so they're about to, yeah, let him come. Uh, yeah, Michael Antonio looks like 26 inch thighs. So that's like a waist, isn't it? Like, yeah. Absolutely huge. Right, so we're going, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Have a look, you can sit down if you like, and then you can photograph some of them, or whatever you like. Yeah, rise, of course. Yeah, Decker's. <laughs> Decker's still got his safe open, he's left his Rolex and his, <laughs> and his Porsche keys in there. You don't find them at all. You've got, just over there is the blank one, and that's Bobby Moore's shirt. Okay, so they all lay out Bobby Moore's shirt in respect of uh, the number six, Bobby Moore. No one can wear the number six and he fired it 50 years after his anniversary and he played against Manchester United in 1958. Matthew Upton, he was wearing it now. You always get your picture on the wall there, so Thomas Suchek, Hammer of the Year this year. Declan Rice was Hammer of the Year last season. And then the season before was Lucas Fabianski. He's over there. Um, David likes to use this as well, the uh, analytics. You know, so a bit like Sky, they do all that. Um, Michael Antonio sits there because he has his music box, so it's quite noisy, so they leave him here. Um, 
Mark Noble obviously sits there. So he's only got the, uh, the one last game now in, in this dressing room. Do all that. Right. Let me down. So he'll be sitting right there, controls the room. Um, you can see the stub marks on the floor. This is where the players have gathered before they go out. You know. So um, the away dressing room is very, it's very, it's larger. It's Ajo the gaffer, what he wants to see at half time. So he relays back to Paul Nevin and he goes back to Stuart Pierce. He puts it to the analytic guys. So the analytic uh, lot, their room's just there. They get everything in there, and they get it all ready for him. So when he comes in, David Moyes at half time, he can put on the screen and go, right, who was on him on that corner? How did that in? And then you can see, like, I mean, a lot of the times years ago, they never had this, you know, so now, and that's it. So obviously if they've got a muscle strain or something into the wall, let all the blood flow through really quickly and then the buckets of ice in there, into there, five minutes and then the, the blood really slows down and then they get out and then when the normal temperature starts to come back, the blood uh, pulls in fresh nutrients to help the actual muscle repair. You've got the showers here, the parrot and blue. And then you have to get these towels to the bathroom at home. There you go, the parrot and blue. Still that winning mentality into the team. And then the dressing room. Well, I'm going to have to get the dressing room <laughs> um, they bring them out here. Right, so if you queue here, stop here. Right, you want to come go in behind? Yeah? Uh -huh. <laughs> your captain. Yeah. Okay, we'll wait for these. And then on your handsets, you'll see where it says tunnel. So if you want to go behind here, this is your team. Okay, handset, push the tunnel bit. And then Nova, can you lead your team out, yeah? yeah. See Yeah, right there, the machine, we've got the machines here. Yeah. They are, we're going to be actually doing that soon. We're going to have it to come out to that, so it'll be uh, part of the tour, which will be good. Just here, this is the track underneath. You see, that's the oh, track. Yeah. Okay, so you got like the running track there. Um, so you got, if you want to sit down in the manager's chair, it's the one on the end there. You want to have a photograph, that's the home dugout. Oh, is this is the away dugout. Photograph on your own? Did it, did it, go there, sit there, one that way. Yeah, just go there now. Right, lovely, yeah. yeah. Going over this way. Yes, so if you want me to do a photograph of you, both of you in a minute, I'll do it over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 